We'll get, we'll get started now while you guys are still eating. So, um, so good afternoon and welcome to BCIT FSA's Diversity Circle Session, an Indigenous framework for diversity and mentorship with special guest Andrew Judge. So my name is Zaha Derek Gamal Joseph. I'm an advisor with Aboriginal Services. I'm also a director at large with the FSA board and of Dakel and Irish descent. I would first like to acknowledge the traditional territory of the Coast Salish people that the BCIT main campuses reside on. Diversity. So what does this represent? Shannon Kelly and I asked this question uh, to the FSA board last year. We got a great show of support in the response in the form of an approved, uh, approved proposal to work on the Diversity Circles, or DC project, that you see here. So we asked Paul Rainiers, Teresa Place, what are other faculty associations doing to support diversity? Equity came up. Um, how are faculty and staff and post-secondary institutions looking at marginalized groups, such as Aboriginal people, women, visible racialized minorities, persons with disabilities, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, queer, and two-spirited persons or people? This is a big question. But looking at this in a proactive way brought our perspective into this Diversity Circles project. I myself, being an Indigenous person, so one of these categories, had a father that went through residential school. This affected my life greatly. My late father, Henry C. Joseph, had most of his education taken away from him and was subjected, subjected to systemic racism and cultural genocide on a bigger picture with residential school. This affected me in my own studies in K-12, in my BA and MA studies throughout as I faced racism and a system that did not always appreciate cultural diversity. This perspective has allowed me, as an Indigenous person, to help other Indigenous people that may be on a similar life path here at BCIT. So, and also to get involved with such great projects as this and great people such as yourselves. So, looking at um, the diversity circle slide here, and you'll notice this amazing uh, take on the BCIT Faculty Staff Association logo. Um, we asked uh, Squamish Nation member Splash, who also did the house post, to design a, a mark or a logo for the BCIT FSA. Um, what he did here was he, he acknowledged the circles within the Coast Salish design. And by, when I acknowledge the Coast Salish uh, uh, territories in my beginning. I'm also doing that here with our project. So with the, the Coast Salish circles, um, we're, we're talking about what the Coast Salish people would look at as circles. And his representation was with the eyes. So he did the Coast Salish eyes. And these represent uh, vision. So overall vision, which is, you see them here, and then a bit, a bit clearer in the other um, areas. So to explain a little bit more about the project, I'll ask Shannon Kelly, my partner in crime, to come in and speak a little bit more. Thank you. Wow, it's tall. Thanks, Derek. Uh, sorry, I was waiting. I always feel so badly for people when you see them peering through the window if they're 10 minutes late, like I usually am. So I, th I said, Sarah, I'm going to stay there for five minutes. And, but it seems there's no stragglers. So yeah, as, as Derek mentioned, this is something that we've been working on for some time. And basically, you know, all of us uh, across this institute and across post-secondary education and the wider community have noticed that the student population is, of course, increasing in diversity, many types of diversity, you know, such as the examples that Derek uh, mentioned, and uh, that Zah Derek mentioned. And, you know, basically, we function in this project 
assuming that diversity is welcomed. We have a very positivistic approach that diversity is welcomed. However, there's no doubt that an increase in diversity does require new awareness, more resources, and new knowledge in some cases. But our project basically uh, hinges on the fact that we believe most of or all of the wisdom needed to encounter diversity positively is already within our ranks. So with faculty in the classroom, with the staff at BCIT, with leadership at BCIT, with partners in the community, we believe the wisdom is already there. The goal of this project is to identify that knowledge to be shared, identify those who need the knowledge, create a network of uh, connectivity, create a peer-to-peer -peer mentorship framework so that we can share the knowledge, share the wisdom, connect positively, uh, and also connect not only within BCIT, not only within post-secondaries, but also within the wider community. So that's the basic underlying principle, that the wisdom is there. Some of us need more wisdom. Uh, some of us have best practices to share. Some of us might know about one area of diversity, not another area. So that's the underlying assumption of the project, that we will bring this wisdom to light create the methodology, the network, the framework for sharing it. Oh yeah, thanks, Zah. So in the first year, obviously there are many, many facets of diversity and we need to be uh, slightly focused. So in the first year, we are focusing on cultural diversity and in particular, uh, the indigenous culture. We're focusing on neurodiversity, so those with learning differences um, would be considered neurodiverse, so neurodiversity is the second area of focus. And finally, uh, gender, and in particular in the first year we're focusing on uh, genders that are underrepresented. So for example, uh, one example would be women are underrepresented in engineering and technology uh, programs. So those are the areas of focus for the first year. But from there, of course, based on what the community shares and what we all find out about each other, we will be able to leverage into other areas as well. Did I miss anything else? I'm okay? All right. Thanks, Al. So um, as we've invited you, the BCIT community, to network about diversity, I'd like to introduce one member of the community um, and our leader at Aboriginal Services. So that is Corey Wilson, who's the Indigenous Initiatives and Partnerships. Just to say a few words, and I've sort of put her on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. I'm used to being on the spot. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, thank you again for the, uh, I guess Elf is going to come and do a little bit of prayer. So I thank for that. And we're, of course, on the coast, coast, unceded Coast Salish Territory. So I know most of you in the room. Um, I'm very happy to be at PCIT. I have to say I was just asked what the new job is like and, and I feel actually now that I have my feet under me, but don't come rushing to my door at the moment. <laughs> Send an email first. So my role, I'm, I'm very excited to be here. Um, there's uh, so much potential, so, much pos so many possibilities. I'm also very, very pleased and excited with the amount of support we've already received in this department um, in, our, in whatever it is. You know, I, I was saying to somebody last night that we put together six proposals last week and it wasn't just me doing them. It was a team effort, which is very incredible. And I'm, so the amount of enthusiasm and, and response here at BCIT, not only just to committed to the jobs, but being committed to the learners. So I think a, 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 a initiative such as this is something that's just going to take off, and I think you're quite right. It seems you have the passion and you have the commitment and the understanding from people. My role, of course, would be anything that you need in terms of Indigenous people or knowledge, whether that's sharing, whether that's indigenizing your curriculum, whether it's just enhancing your own personal knowledge. We will start doing kind of Indigenous 101, if you will, that you can sign up for, and we're going to get all hopefully through all the people that work for BCIT. Um, any kind of uh, 
you read something, you want to uh, discuss it, just send me an email. We will also be moving to one set email as well for, for that I'll, if you have anything, a question in regards to anything Indigenous that I'll respond to. And I know everybody has said the loop, but I haven't quite figured out the loop yet. But I, <laughs> I, will, I will try to work on that. So I just know I'm very excited to be here. We have a very strong team. I'm very pleased and grateful and thankful to all of you that have already shown your commitment and, and um, not only to Indigenous Indigenous people, but clearly to all of the other marginalized groups and challenges that, um, you know, the multi barriers that our students will face. And I firmly believe in diversity and I really, really, it's the way to go, right? If we, if, you know, that whole saying, you can't leave, you're only as good as the, the slowest person or the person that doesn't succeed as well. So we've got to bring everybody along, find everybody's strengths and skills, and that's what's going to make a, a great institution and, of course, a great experience for our students. So thank you. Um, I'm sure you can find my email. <laughs> so send me an email if you want, and, and I'm happy to participate and help, whether, again, just your own personal knowledge, indigenizing your curriculum, making connections with indigenous groups or agencies. Um, so thank you. And now I'm just going to ask uh, one of the, our elders from Aboriginal Services, Alf Dumont, to come up for a minute. Alfred Dumont Indigenicas, Badaban Magizi Anishnabe Ni Wintz, Wabashkashki and Dodum, Gichi Anishnabe, Aboriginal Services, BCIT. I'm here to introduce uh, Moko Moshe, uh, Andrew Judge. Uh, Andrew is going to share his story with you. Uh, when we share, we uh, normally tell our own stories, so I'm not going to tell your story completely. Uh, but we want to welcome him here. He is currently uh, doing his doctoral studies on ancient Anishinaabe uh, customs, or uh, as some of my friends would say, Nishnabe or Nishnab. Uh, I was told by Edna Manitowabi, you may know her, uh, that uh, what we do is we keep shortening these versions as we go along, so the words get shorter and shorter. He is currently the coordinator of Indigenous education at the College of the Rockies. Um, Andrew was is of uh, Nishinaabe and Irish descent, and you notice the Irish plays a part of it. I have Irish in me as well. Uh, I think the Irish and uh, Nishinaabe got along very well together, uh, <laughs> so and produced many offspring. Uh, so we want to welcome Andrew and. Uh, Do I need to turn this on, this mic? Yeah, it's good. We're ready. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, bonjour. Makoma se indigenous kas, mashik and odam, dashkan zibi and dunji banish nabe and nini and dao, ujbi ege and nini and dao, nui shaganashi. I'll speak English again. Um, I want to first uh, give thanks to the Coast Salish ancestors who um, not only lived here, not just lived here, but they walked here, you know, they left their footprints here. And um, I think that's, that's a, a critical thing, a critical um, way to look at that, right? Not just that they were here and to give thanks, but to remember that they, they walked here. They put their hands in the soil here. They fished here. They played here. They raised children here. And um, what a gift it is that we are able to be here on this land at this time um, and to be, to be, for many of us here in this room, thriving as a result of, uh, well, what has transpired through uh, colonization. So... I give great thanks to those ancestors, those extraordinary Coast Salish people who are here. And also, um, I spoke my Anishinaabe language. I'm Anishinaabe and Irish, as was <laughs> said. Um, I'm actually mostly Irish, 
if you can believe that. <laughs> and um, I believe actually it was, it's my Irish ancestry uh, also in, com in combination with my indigenous andres ancestry to the Great Lakes region uh, that gives me my strength uh, as well as uh, my ability to see the world I through an indigenous lens. I didn't grow up on uh, a First Nations community. Uh, it wasn't until I was about 22 in university that um, after a, a class one day, it's a really long story in itself, but um, I had an amazing Christina Bonsuin. Uh, some of you might know her, but um, she teaches, I believe, at UVic now. But she said, after cl beautiful, tall Anishinaabe woman, she said, Andrew, come with me after class. And I said, okay. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, and um, she actually took me to Indigenous services. And it, had it not been for the Indigenous services at Western uh, uh, University of Western Ontario, Western University today, um, I wouldn't be here. So um, thanks to Christine and thanks to the elders that I began to see the the um, elders who began to um, turn me right they, they they turned my direction because you know i was I was a student athlete, very successful one national champion um, I was you know that guy right that was walked around campus with a big head and thought you know being a great athlete made you who you were um, as I learned my ancestral wisdom. And I am continue to be on that journey. I realized that, uh, in fact, that doesn't make me who I am at all. Um, welcome. So, what I'm actually going to do right now is um, I'm going to sing, and I wanted to smudge, and I think it's really important that we start in that way. So. If I could get everybody up, before you do get up, we're going to go outside, and we're going to try to do this uh, rather quickly. But we're going to go outside. Um, I have a smudge ready to go here, and we're going to do that. And I'll just go around that circle. So we'll go outside. Uh, we'll form a circle. We'll try to be quick about it, you know, and you say to the kids, stand on the line. We'll, we'll do that, and um, that's how we're going to start today. <laughs> so come on. No problem. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm Derek today. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Thank I you. For any problems, <laughs> What's that? Do I have any problems? <laughs> oh, don't get me started. How much time do you have after my presentation? It's <laughs> perfect. Uh, Derek. Derek. Is he, will you help me? <laughs> matches yep. but if if it doesn't work okay. your your plan B <laughs> thank you so just come in tight because it is kind of windy here. You're gonna you're gonna do this, okay? What? You're gonna go around? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm gonna sing. This way. Okay. Yeah. Just this just way. yeah yeah. Just um. Okay. Um. So yeah, just go right, yeah. So so Derek's gonna go around the circle and just um. What this medicine is is uh sage um. And what it does is it actually, it brings our minds together, okay? It also clears our energy, okay? Now, we pick up a lot of things being, especially in an institutional setting, okay? We're constantly around uh, very busy people, people who are constantly stressed. And so, this is an opportunity in this moment to just breathe deeply. If you... Um, 
can close your eyes. Uh, that can help. Okay. But what I want you guys to do, if you can, is try to remember a time uh, of, of past. A time when these uh, superstructures did not exist. Um, and you're breathing in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Bringing calm. And, and trying to escape this uh, 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 Ananda Mawin, okay, your, your intention, but coming to your Odema, your heart. Okay? Come to the place of your heart. <laughs> it's, it's challenging sometimes I in this setting, okay? but through your breath, um, you can begin to get back in touch with your heart. And so in that, I'm going to sing. our start <laughs> and um, so we're gonna we're gonna usher back in and uh, continue thank you thank you all for participating So I want to um, I want to position what I'm about to share with you, and I want to position it, position it within some of the teachings. And um, there's a really great article, and it's called uh, "Journey Through Daylight Land," and it's uh, it was written by Jim Dumont, 
Jim Dumont is uh, currently a fifth degree uh, Medewan shaman. Uh, shaman is, is, you know, sort of a colonial word, but uh, a, a medicine person, basically. And while he wrote that article, um, I guess almost uh, 40 years ago, um, all of what is in there is still applicable for the Anishinaabe today. And to me, that's incredible, especially um, in an in institutional setting where, you know, the program I was using on my laptop three weeks ago is now, you know, obsolete. Um, and and uh, everything is changing so fast. But what I'm going to share with you is something that is not ever going to change. Now, it will be adapted. It will be uh, um, uh, blended in different environments. But the, the wisdom within uh, will not change. And I've had the great privilege to spend some time with Jim as well as some time in ceremony. And um, I'm not Medewan. I want to make that clear. So I'm not claiming to be something I'm not. But I want to honor where this wisdom comes from. It also comes from a great book, uh, Anishinaabe Minoba Matsu and the Way of the Good Life by Darcy Rowe. And... Um, Darcy Rowe is an incredible guy. Uh, I've had the great privilege to sit with him, to talk with him as well, and uh, learn from him. And learn about uh, this way of life, this way of being. Right? It's remembering what we are as human beings. It's remembering what we are in our heart, not what we have created in our minds. And so... It does require you to suspend your disbelief to some extent. Um, these practices, um, these strategies for learning and educating and engaging with people have been uh, um, utilized by indigenous people and specifically I talk to the people like my ancestors, the Anishinaabe and the Great Lakes region. Of course, I come here as a visitor to share um, for what we say is since time immemorial. Okay. And how is that possible? How could we have been practicing this since a time before memory? Well, again, you have to suspend your disbelief. <coughs> okay. So what does it look like practically? What, does it, what are some of the um, parts to this way of seeing the world? Well. This is uh, my uh, personal adaptation of a medicine wheel. And um, just the first picture there when we went outside, that was actually a painting I did for a master's class. And uh, what I was trying to do is I was trying to decolonize assessment practices. <laughs> okay? I was trying to implement change, and that's what I continue to try to do. And I'm going to show you many examples how not only that I've tried to do it, but how it's worked and how it's been successful. And here we have um, the self in the center. Okay. You are always at the center of your circle. And so self-introspection becomes uh, essential. And of course, uh, there's so much research around mindfulness practices. Has anybody practiced mindfulness? Okay. okay. I'm sure in the next 10 years, everybody's going to throw up their hand because they're going to see the extraordinary value in sitting quietly with oneself. <laughs> and um, looking within, okay? And that's really what, uh, in part, this strategy is about. It's looking within. And as I was thinking about this presentation, I think, oh, what am I gonna share, right? Like, what am I gonna share with brilliant people who have heard a lot of things, right? And they probably hear it over and over again. They wanna hear something new. Well, I thought, okay, I have to share some of the uh, indigenous wisdom. And so this is, this is your um, stages of life. Now, this does get more complex. There's actually seven stages of life. Um, but to simplify, to put, quadrantize them, you know, to uh, help us to sort of look at them um, individualistically like we like to do as um, uh, English people, English-speaking people, um, we quadrantize things. And so 
beyond that, we're always oriented to these four cardinal directions. And of course, our starting point is the east. Why do we start in the east? What? Yeah. Okay. The sun doesn't actually rise, though. The earth spins. <laughs> So the Earth spins east to west at about, you know, what is it, 11,000 kilometers an hour. And um, I think what's more extraordinary than that is that the sun is actually moving around our solar system, too. So it's moving at an extraordinary uh, pace. And then you could say, you know, the galaxy, um, the Milky Way, right? We call Jibai Mikana, it's like the spirit path, the path of the spirit. It's moving too, right? Um, but if you think about the sun, okay, because the sun is our grandfather, um, you know, it's it's one we cannot survive without. Um, one of one of the, you know, then we have the moon. But if we think about the sun and and, and its movement, okay, um, oscillating between that plane of the Milky Way galaxy, well, the Earth is coming with it, and it's spinning like this. Well, yeah, that makes you dizzy when you kind of think about it too long, okay? But, but the point is, is that we're always spinning in circles, okay? That is a natural way. We cannot escape it, okay? And so, um, beyond that, we have these four medicines. Of course, we just use this. I'm going to pass around this sweet grass um, to David here. Just have a, take a smell. It's medicine, Okay, these are these are sort of the, these four here: um, cedar, sage, sweetgrass, and tobacco. These are the four, uh, you know, I guess uh, like essential medicines, right? They're very safe medicines. It's like you know that sage just burned nicely away, you know, um, and they're cleansing medicines. Right? And so this is how we lived for so long. We always were cleansing. We always were sort of wiping away the, the things we take on, the things, the stress, the anxiety, the judgment, right? Because we've become such judgmental people, right? Um, I, I see it especially in this environment of uh, Vancouver with, you know, there, it's like you have to drive a BMW. <laughs> We're like one of the worst cars, by the way, right? But... <laughs> They really are, like 50 grand, I think, every 10 years you spend extra on a, a BMW. Anyway, sorry f for those who have them. But um, I like cars too, okay? So um, beyond that, okay, we, we have the earth, wind, we have these four, uh, 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 you know, we have the earth, wind, fire, and water, okay? Now, those are essential, essential parts of our survival, okay? We say the fire is in our heart. That's why I say, connect with your heart, connect with your fire. Sometimes, uh, of course, we let our fires burn too brightly, right? And, and so I was reminded on the plane by women. We had, we had a, uh, a, from Cranbrook to here, a conversation about God. And she was a Christian. And um, I was really appreciative of what she shared. But um, what she shared was... Um, a, for me, a re remembering. So I came back to a teaching that I had a long time ago. And this is, this is part of the strategy. Is that, yeah, we, we extend out. We learn, we learn, we learn. But we come back to our center. What drives you? What makes you tick? Are you doing it right now? Right? Are you following the path of your gift, the thing that makes your heart race? For me, I am, like, yeah, so, um, <laughs> but how have um, these strategies, right, I, I mean, this gets more and more complex, and I'm going to show you, but ha have these strategies been implemented before? Well, yeah, they have, okay? So the Canadian Council on Learning has used this medicine wheel model, or an adaptation of it. I think one of the most important pieces in this is the looking at internal versus external learning, Okay, and that means institutional, the internal piece and the external piece, the blended between the um, Eurocentric colonial mindset and the indigenous. Okay, I have to remind you, we're all indigenous. We all have ancestors. Some of us just know them a little better, right? And that's okay. However much you know your ancestors is okay right in this moment. 
right? And for me, when I learned about my answers, it was a call to really dive headlong into this uh, uh, pool of knowledge, right? And, and at the beginning, I said, I want to learn it all. I want to learn all the indigenous knowledge there is to know, right? How naive was I? And it, it, in fact, that <laughs> got me into a lot of trouble. Because, of course, what we uh, uh, want, we attract. And uh, I, I began to be surrounded by these extraordinary knowledge keepers. But it was too much. Why? Because I didn't come back to my center. Because I went whew, way out, way out, learning like things that just, I mean, at the time for you know, a Eurocentric young guy who thought he was great because he did sports, right? was too much, right? And so there was, there was a, um, a collapse. Okay? And so, so my encouragement is to, to, to follow these paths slowly, to learn just a little bit. These are, all of these are libraries of knowledge with respect to any of the indigenous people that you might be um, um, pursuing relationships with. Okay? But the really important part is that internal, external learning. Okay? Yeah, we have to have jobs. Okay? That's how we've constructed our society. Yeah, we have to learn how to do those jobs. Okay? But are you continually awakening the gift within your heart? Right? And that's, that's sort of the question. So it gets even more complex. And this is actually the design of my research study. This is the framework for the design of my research study. And so it's designed on the four um, um, essential principles of learning for Anishinaabe people. Right? What a, what a, um, this is the highest order of consciousness. When you know all these things, right? sure, I know how to respect people. Right? Sure, I know how to, well, I think I know how to love. Right? But do I know how to walk my truth? Do I know how to walk in honesty? Right? What is honesty? Well, it's my gift. Honest living is living the gift within your heart. Right? That's, that's tough. Okay? But this is how we were taught. This is how our ancestors taught us um, prior to the time of um, colonization. They taught us to follow the gifts within our heart, and so they listened to our dreams. They watched how we behaved. Maybe we would, be, we would become the best arrow maker. You know? But in a society that relied on hunting you know, as an essential part of survival, how important was the arrow maker? Perhaps where we were a great-grandmother, and that was the gift of the woman on the plane. She was a great-grandma. She said, I'm a great nurturer. And that, was the me that, that ultimately came down for me to the teachings of the water. Right? But um, this gets even more complex. I'm not going to go too deeply into it. Um, if, if, but if you have any questions along the way, so uh, please just feel free to ask. But I guess... The message here is recognizing that we can blend indigenous knowledge with Eurocentric knowledge. And it's not necessarily just about teaching about indigenous people. Anybody can pick up a, a resource guide and a book and say, oh, um, you know, the Coast Salish did this, this, and this. Well, the Coast Salish, in the many forums they are today, are still doing those things. Just like the Anishinaabe, we're still doing this, these things. We're still practicing these customs as much as we can. And in a lot of cases, we're in recovery. What are we recovering from? Who knows? We're recovering from genocide, right? That's what every indigenous nation in North America right now is recovering from. And we need your help. Because you are great. Each one of you in this room is great. 
Each one of you in this room has gifts within your heart that are extraordinary and that will contribute to the well-being of our society and our community. And so I ask the question again, are you following the wisdom of your heart, your heart wisdom? If you haven't discovered your gift yet, that's okay. Perhaps you haven't put it into language, but you know exactly what it is. Does anybody want to share what their gift is? Isn't it amazing that I bet you if I asked you, what are the five top problems in this institution? (laughs) Every one of you would probably have five problems, and I bet you there'd be so many overlapping concentric circles in that. right? Because each of you can see easily what the problems are, right? Why is that? And yet no one's willing to share their gift in this moment. But that's okay, (laughs) right? And this isn't about targeting anyone. It's about a realization. It's about a recognition within your heart, right? I bet you some of you right now are going, (gasps) And your heart's starting to beat. Should I share my gift? Please do if you can. (laughs) That's okay. Okay? But it will. It will make your heart race. Um, and, and And I guarantee you this. You all have overlapping gifts as well. This is where this framework goes. Rather than finding a problem and looking for a solution to the problem, which is is constantly what goes on in institutions. And um, I was thinking, okay, I've worked in post-secondary for five years now, taught for four years, designed nine courses, um, taught over 500 students, uh, if you can believe that, and developed a program in Indigenous Studies. Okay? I now see how it works, right? I started out so naive, like, uh, you know, I was, oh, I'm going to change the world, but, um, you know, all I can change is myself. All I can change is how I look at my own gift, right? And uh, what I've learned to do is I've learned to ally myself with um, those also pursuing their gift. And what this does is it actually enhances my own, right? So rather than hanging out, the people go, oh, did you see what she was doing last week and how she typed up that message? She made an error in her spelling and, you know, and it goes on and on, right? Because we can so easily point out the faults. I mean, that's really how our education system works. We learn to find what's wrong, right? But what is the difference when we start to learn what is right with us all. Okay. And so um, I thought just the last couple examples, okay, pretty much everything in this uh, world that is natural is done by way of circle. Okay. So, you know, an ants, you know, you don't see the ants building like this like square, you know, super structure. And if you actually look at what ants, ants are pretty extraordinary, won't get into that. You know, a bear den. A bear doesn't go, oh, and put in scaffolding, right? And um, Because it's living in a natural way, right? The eagles, the trees, um, the turtles. The turtles, just they can't even hide it, right? They have even the whole calendar on their back, 13 moon calendar, 28 day cycle, okay? And of course, the shell. Everything's growing according to the natural way. What is it? Well, it's most evident in the shell, right? There's the spin. There's what we're doing. We're going around and around our universe. And, of course, um, the Mayans were the ones who mapped it all out. And if you ever get a chance, anybody looked at Mayan knowledge? They were profound, right? Look at just one, like Tikal or something. I think there's recently a a discovery of a new village, but it's not even a village. It's it's extraordinary centers of high consciousness, right? Because why? Because we're remembering what we are. And and I said, okay, somebody's going to say, well, trees grow linearly, right? They go straight up. In fact, 
they don't. Um, and this is, uh, just recently I took this picture, it's inside of a tree. And what's extraordinary about this is you can't necessarily see that this tree is growing spirally. Um, you kind of can, but these are the branches. Look at They grow spirally as well. Okay. So why do we continue to try to barrel down on the straight line? Right? Why do we constantly do that? Well, I mean, obviously, in, in many instances, it's by design, okay? And so, um, we're going to do an activity, okay? I'm going to get you engaged, so don't uh, shake, <laughs> uh, um, sharing, okay, about your gift. But what I want you guys to do right now, okay, is I want you to take the um, sheets of paper that you have on the desk, um, the um, sticky notes, okay? And you're going to um, write down three skills, talents, qualities or abilities that you have um, on, on, a on a piece of paper, okay? So skills, yep. Any color, pick your favorite color. Any color pen. And you're going to write down, okay, three skills, talents, qualities and or abilities you might have. Okay, and we're going to collect those. Um, Uh, if you want, sure. But you can try to do it all on one if you can. If you've done it on a few, don't worry about it. You can throw it in the hat, okay? Or in the, in the thing we're going to collect it in. No worries. Yeah, skills, talents, qualities, or abilities that you might have, okay? And this is yours, right? Your skills, your talents, your qualities and abilities. Okay, so I'm going to give you like another minute to do that and then I'll collect them or we'll collect them. Thank you. Oh, and if you could actually fold it so that your um, sticky part doesn't, <laughs> isn't exposed. <laughs> yeah, that kind of came out. Yeah, so, so you want to fold the sticky part uh, like just right in half. Okay. Either... We don't want it to stick because we're going to throw these all in one uh, basket here. Yeah. I can forward it now? Okay. Thank you. Um, no, I think Za, yeah, yeah, but I can do it too, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Right here. Okay, good. Okay, so um, we're going to move on to the second part of this activity. Thought you guys were off the hook. Um, and the second part of this activity is we're going to go back around. We're going to go back around, and you're going to pull out one of your peers, colleagues, 
skills, gifts, talents, or abilities from the bag, okay? And just hold on to it. Here, I'll, I'll put them in for you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, here's the... So if you wrote down a few, then pull out a few, okay? So that we're not left with somebody's skills in the bag, okay? So if you, if you wrote down on a few pieces of paper, take out a few. If you need me to get you a couple, I, I will. So did you guys all, you took the... I only, t I only wrote on one. Okay. But okay. I'll take another one. Okay. Do you want me to, I'll just grab some. Okay. Okay, guys, you got some to choose from here. Just, uh, yeah, there you go. If you, so you wrote down on one or two? Just one. Okay, go ahead, take, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you take a couple? Okay. Um, do you guys want to take another one? Oh, you haven't had, a, had one yet? Okay. Take another one. <laughs> yeah, so may, yeah, you want to go around just finishing off and I'll get them go started on the next. Yeah, sir. Okay, so now the next part, okay, is as a group, you guys are going to begin to brainstorm or imagine, okay, um, something, activity, group, um, anything, okay? Any kind of activity, group, something based on the skills, talents, and abilities that you have pulled out of the basket. Okay? So this requires you to come together, start a conversation. You have about five minutes. Somebody take maybe a little bit of notes. Okay? And you're going to come up with something. Okay? Whether it be an activity, whether it be a group, an organization, Something based on the skills, um, talents, uh, and abilities of your peers. Could be BCIT, could be outside BCIT. Use your imagination. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to end the conversations there for now, okay? So we're just going to come back to the presence of this moment, and um, I know how fun it can be to talk about strengths, so maybe if we could just get one rep. Now, I want to be clear that you don't ha it doesn't have to be some fully formed you know activity with e every uh, dimension uh, uh, um, ready to go right now okay I gave you three <laughs> minutes to do it 
Okay, but just someone to maybe summarize um, one part of the conversation that you had. And we'll start here. Okay, yeah, yeah, you just want, yeah, you're ready. <laughs> So our whoop. It's going. Hello. Start spreading the news. Um, our notes were around help, respect, intuitive listening, uh, organization, empathy, uh, laugh out loud, gather, be sensitive, humor, things like that. So we decided that we are going to do a story, story selling, storytelling circle. And in that storytelling circle, the first person starts the story. Each person that adds into it not only has to add to the story, but has to uh, also rephrase what they think they've heard before. And then the comparison at the end is, is the beginning of the story got anything to do with how it ended at the, at the, at the last of the people going around the table? Great. Thank you. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll go over here. We'll go around. Just just like that, a minute to summarize. That's perfect. That sounds like a fun activity. <laughs> okay. So some of the words that we received were connecting, family, fairness, love. I can't read that one. <laughs> Patience, details, listening, compassion, possibilities, soccer, cooking, logic. Um, and we thought about all of this, and we thought that this group would form um, a PTH, which was post-traumatic healing. We would be a responsive group that would go into any any event that had gone through some sort of a trauma and we would bring back healing to that group. We would, um, we would hear them, help them, and start getting them active and healthy again, start responding to the things that they love. Awesome. Excellent. Keep, let's keep it going. Just right here, next group. Uh, so we, uh, we had uh, humor, uh, seeing connections, ability to meet people where they are, uh, kind of walking in other people's shoes, um, and sharing stories. So we, similar to Teresa's group, we came up with this idea of creating a, a club, a place where you could come in and you could storytell and you could also speak to uh, it's a safe place. You know, you could go in and talk about things that are on your mind. Um, I, we were talking to the group. I heard this thing about workplace grudges and the, the fact that people find it difficult to raise them and speak about them kind of safely. A, a really safe place where you just walk in other people's shoes and you feel supported and maybe with a little bit of humor inside. You know, the other day I walked past Shannon in the corridor. As she went past me, I flipped to the bird. She didn't know. I felt good about it at the time, but now I feel bad. <laughs> so I, I've started it right now. <laughs> Forgive me. Okay, so we won't add that part, but <laughs> to each their own, chacun son goût. Next group, yeah. please. Um, okay, some of the words we had were cooking, empathy, humor, listening. Uh, teacher, understanding, uh, caring, and holding space. Um, and so we thought of holding a cooking class, you know, featuring different styles of cooking, different cultures of cooking as a way of, you know, teaching people and, you know, listening to people and just, you know, um, creating a space where they can learn, you know, the various cooking techniques in a very open, humorous environment, so people aren't intimidated by what they're trying to do, but that they can all really uh, participate and uh, get something good out of it. Excellent. Um, right on to the next group. Perfect. Keep her going. Okay. Uh, our group had uh, a bunch of words. Uh, think outside the box. With that was another word, tolerance is needed. Uh, storytelling, laughing, persistence, Leadership, humility, good listener, compassion, think positively, willingness to learn, attentive learner, learning, and uh, reliable. So we also had a storytelling theme, and we thought, well, we 
didn't really figure out how we would do it, but it would be about a leader who had to learn all of these other traits along their journey to uh, becoming a good leader. Awesome. Right on to the next one. Last okay. one, I think. Okay. We had problem solving, prioritizing, time management, working well with people, teaching, caring about um, diversity, seeing the big picture, generous. And we thought this could be a wonderful um, group that would show leadership and help us develop vision and a mission statement for BCIT or sort of the, the, the community values. Good. Okay. Okay. Um. Awesome. Way to go, guys. So just in like a matter of 15 minutes or less, you guys took each other's strengths and made it into something. What's most extraordinary about what you just did is that um, we see these uh, basically three overlapping circles here. So what that tells me is there's a lot of people in here who are really dedicated to this kind of activity. That tells you a lot about this room. It tells you a lot about the people in this room and your commitment. Okay? Your commitment not only to bringing together people into circle, okay? but ensuring those um, people are able to share their story in a safe, open, welcoming environment. What you just did there is you, you, um, you, you wove an intention together based on the strengths of your community. Way to go. <laughs> Give yourself an applause. Like, that, like that's awesome. In, in literally under 15 minutes, okay? That's the power of our gifts. That's the power of our strength to see each other's uh, positive elements, right? And what's most important about the activity is that you didn't do it based on your own. You looked at the strengths of those around you and you built something great. Okay? And I'm sure if you gave you a week and the funding to do it, you would turn this into uh, uh, something really extraordinary. Undoubtedly. So this is the framework. This is the framework that I'm working off of. Um, the concentric circles model shows up in uh, many uh, different contexts in academic writing. Okay? Um, I was most influenced by uh, Darcy Rose's writing, um, which I taught a course on his book. But in this concentric circles model, okay, there's um, six, at least six, you know, we're going to stick with six right now, but interwoven elements. Okay. What's at the center? Yes. Okay. And so what do you have to do at your center? You have to identify your gifts. Okay? And so what I'm sharing with you is actually indigenous knowledge, the Anishinaabe knowledge. Okay? This is how we were raised. We were raised by reflecting on our own gifts. Now this happened um, in the adolescent stage. Okay? Or, or at, a, at a stage when we left our mother's side. It was, it was a respect stage. Okay? Because our first... Um, uh, if I just point over here and you refer back uh, to the slide pr um, couple previous, okay? It's that stage when we're learning about love, okay? But when we start to venture off, we start to um, um, go and walk to the fires of our neighbors, our uncles, our aunts, okay? We start to learn respect, but we start to show who we are by what we're interested in. There's a reason why certain uh, uh, boys play with Tonka trucks and uh, certain girls play with dolls, right? Now, some of that is based on what we think they're supposed to get. I remember just seeing on my Facebook feed a friend of mine who just had a kid and said, please stop sending our baby girl pink clothes. <laughs> our our uh, her drawer looks like someone got sick in it, okay, with pink. I am nothing against pink, by the way, I love pink, actually, and I love Dirk's shirt, <laughs> especially. <laughs> uh, so, um, 
we have these ideas, right, about, you know, what we're supposed to do. Why? What are they based upon? Have we ever considered uh, why we do those things? Why we give pink to girls and blue to boys? What's at the heart of that? Right? And so that, obviously that's a big philosophical question which we're not going to answer right now. But what if we based how we uh, 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 nurtured ourselves most specifically because we're all of an age where, where we must do that. Okay? We must take care of ourselves. But what if we did it based on our own gifts? What if we could do that here? What if you could do that here? You could nurture yourself based on the gifts that are, resonate from your heart. Okay? And so that is part of the first layer of, I'll say, consciousness. Okay? Now, I want to uh, say that these are very fluid. Okay? While I'm quadratizing things and I'm putting into them sectors, okay? and I'm showing you the concentric circles, um, each circle influences all the rest. That's something that we rarely reflect on in uh, a, um, a colonial setting, in an institutional setting, right? And I want to say that's something I rarely reflect on. You know, typing up this email, sending it out to uh, Joe, Jenny, and Jill. Okay, random names. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, how is that impacting the universe? Well, when we set our intentions based on our gifts from our heart, we are impacting the uh, universe. Okay. So the next layer is that family. So we have self, and then we have sort of that immediate family, okay? and then our community or our linguistic speaking relatives. These were generally how uh, our communities were set up. You have yourself, okay, your clan identity. You have your family, right? Those immediate people who are going to caretake you. And it, we say that there are seven people always who are, took general responsibility for raising a child. Seven people, uh, usually three men, three women, and elders, or in some cases, three men, three women, and an elder, right? Now, the elder and the people raising the child were not just random. Because not only was that child raised and named, okay, and this is a big thing, named based on uh, how the elders uh, intuited who that child would become and what they would become based on dreams in some instances, based on external stimulus in other instances. Okay? I mean, this is recognizing the value of all the interconnected um, parts of our uh, environment, our, our cosmos, our universe. This is why indigenous knowledge is so complex. It's not a simple thing. And sure, we can point to a, um, a sentence in a book. I remember in my, um, one of my master's educational leadership classes, we did the history of education. And there was one paragraph on indigenous people. And I was appalled. And I couldn't believe because by that point, I had learned the truth about residential schools, right? And that was something that I, I mean, I continue to... Uh, um, um, heal from, right? But no longer can we be relegated to a page, a paragraph, and a page of a book. We need to retell the stories as they were, right? Not only in our classrooms, but in our uh, uh, general environments, right, of these institutions. Because I guarantee you, uh, hopefully, I don't know, is anybody in here, does anybody not know what residential schools are? Maybe nobody willing to admit. But, you know, all throughout my short teaching career, and I'm sure through some of yours, you'd say, oh, this is what happened to the indigenous people. And now, of course, we have um, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report has six um, volumes. Has anybody read any of them or some of them? Yeah? Okay, a couple. Yeah, I've read a bit of one of them. Okay, wow. Six volumes. Okay, and that was only 7,500 survivors. Um, that was about 10% of the currently living survivors of residential schools. Okay? So, um, 
why, why am I telling you this? Well, I want you to know that <laughs> by not telling those things, we are impacting not only our uh, self, family, community, environment, but we're, in, <laughs> we're impacting our cosmos and our universe. Okay? Because we're not living according to the gifts th that resonate from our heart and the truth. Okay? So, um, what I did was I changed the framework. Now, in this one, how this is designed was it was because each of these indigenous groups, before they were decimated, right? Many of them. Some of them still exist, but a uh, few and far between. But before they're decimated, they uphold the laws of nature. Okay? The value of being a human again, right? The value of recognizing our, like, you know, we're born... Uh, naked and l reliant on our mothers for like, well, for some of us, till we're like 25, right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, right? Are we really the greatest beings on the earth? You could look at a gazelle, a gazelle's born, this is like running within like 30 minutes, right? Right? We have to humble ourselves. We have to remember what it is to be human. What it is to be human. To sort of stand on the earth and go, wow, I'm traveling 1,100 11, kilometers an hour, spinning around, right? Going around this huge, uh, massive, I think uh, uh, one million earths could fit inside the sun, Right? We have to humble ourselves. And the sun is just a small sun, right, in res respect to the universe. Um, and, and that's so we can recover. And now, this was the network prior to the time of the decimation of the indigenous people who upheld this network for thousands and thousands of years. Right? They ensured the sustainability of all their environments. Okay? What a gift. What a gift to be born into that world. Right? Oh, it's like the dramatic music plays. <laughs> that was perfect timing. <laughs> okay. So, so, but this, this, uh, so I'm taking this framework, okay, and, and I'm putting it into the context of BCIT. So we have, of course, um, deans. We have um, support staff, student uh, services, president and leadership team, indigenous partners, stakeholders. I can't really read that. Uh, Students Association and the FSA, that's us, that's you guys, some of you. Um, and and um, each one of you upholds the, uh, uh, like the context of your environment of your school. Well, what we're recognizing is a need for diversifying, diversity, honoring um, people who learn differently. How do we honor people who learn differently? We have to change the way we teach them. We have to change the way, I have to change the way I look at it, right? And by changing the way I look at it, how do I change the way I look at it? Well, I'm going to honor the gifts of my heart. That's where I have to go back to. And that's hard for us, right? Because when I asked you guys to say, what is your gift? We're reluctant. We're reluctant to be human. Okay. But in this context, okay, um, how this can be built, how this new uh, diverse identity, by implementing some of the things that you guys just came up with, these extraordinary uh, uh, groups, right, that you have to lead, that there's going to have to be champions of, people who are going to be there on the Tuesday night to say, hey, we're going to do storytelling tonight. And without the champions, without the people, you know, it, it's not going to necessarily happen. We're not going to create that holistic, welcoming um, environment that's going to allow us to move into the, you know, the 22nd century without a destroyed environment. Right? So, um, your identity... It has to be defined. How are you going to define it? Well, we have to have uh, focus group meetings. Each one of these uh, um, people who works in these environments lives, plays, and sleeps and dreams it, right? Some of you okay. have to be asked, 
What is your gift? Because what we're going to um, start to see is that some of the gifts of the deans is the same as some of the gifts of the stakeholders. And some of the gifts of the stakeholders is some of the gifts of the support staff. We're going to see some of the gifts of the student services members is the same as the uh, uh, faculty members. There's where you find the common ground. There's where you can build um, um, these groups, these uh, uh, diversity circles, right? And I can't tell you how that's going to look. Now, I can, I can, I'm influenced now by what you wove just in 15 minutes. And I can sort of say, wow, that sounds like a really great direction. Okay? But how it's going to look once all these uh, focus groups are asked, right? You know? Just go outside later, or how many people have a dean or department head? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Go ask your department head or dean, what is their gift? Throw them off and go, oh, what? <laughs> right? What is your gift? Right? What will they say? It will be really interesting to find out. Okay? Um, once these are defined, now this is, again, this is a framework. We're, we're not even... Uh, we're not even at this layer yet. These two layers um, are built in tandem. Okay. Um, but you start to find out the stakeholder, the support networks that surround BCIT. Right? Because I guarantee you're going to find people, individuals, groups, um, organizations that support what you're doing that are going to want to help you build this uh, uh, diversified identity, the ones that's not built on um, trying to fix a problem, but one that's trying to be built based on the uh, gifts of the people who are in the institution. Okay? And it sounds really great, <laughs> right? But it's going to be really hard work, right? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into that. But just a reminder of the FSA and your vision. So, uh, outstanding through careers through outstanding employment conditions. I found out um, that you guys have a really high um, um, student to employment rate. That's great. I wonder how high the students' um, uh, em embracing of their gift is. Right? I, I mean, would we ever even think to, to ask that question? Okay. So, the mission. Create an uh, outstanding workplace, engage, celebrate, uh, protect, and make um, gains for all our members. Um, that's, a good, that's a good mission, right? And, of course, your values, um, empowerment, influence, principled action, social justice, sol solidarity, and strength. I like this social justice one, right? Now, now... When I was thinking about this, right, and, and like, wow, you know, this is really hard to do. Like, to actually implement um, this kind of strategy within an institution that's not necessarily based on, you know, enhancing the faculties, the gr like the history classes or the um, whatever classes you have, you know, to make them better, to make them more accommodating. Let's make an environment with our, in our institution that's welcoming to the gifts of the people who are there, right? Especially our own. Um, there's going to have to be champions. There's going to have to be people who say, I'm committed to this and I'm going to do my part. And yeah, in a lot of ways, it's on top of what you're already doing. In a lot of ways, it's like, oh, I don't think I can do anymore. Well, we're D Derek and I were talking on the way up here, and it's like, man, why do we as indigenous people have to fight for every single thing in, in, in these uh, colonial frameworks? Why do we have to do that? Why do we have to? I don't have a budget, right? I, I, I don't want to go there, but um, okay. Why, why are we considered secondary? Well, of course there's reasons, right? And, and we actually have to uh, um, heal from those reasons because those reasons are related to some really horrific things. Um, and as I say to sometimes to the staff that I work with and the faculty and the deans and the department heads and the um, students is that we have to kind of feel a little bit uncomfortable before we can grow, right? I mean, we have to do this every single day. <laughs> we, 
we have to fight, <laughs> right? To say, hey, indigenous knowledge is extraordinary. It has so much power to heal and change and make society great again. I don't, know, I don't want to go there, <laughs> right? But to, to truly, to, to um, not say, hey, you and I are different, because your prescription is like probably like 4.1, and mine's 4.25 in this eye. And four, okay, no, right? We are human beings having a human experience, and you have a gift, and your gift is great. Thank you for existing. Thank you for living and breathing today. You know, thank you for being here, all of you, for coming to this place to share, right? And so I wanted to give you an example of um, what I've done oh, and to actually implement this, to actually um, try to do these things. Let me see if I can go to this page here and see if it'll come up. It's not coming up. Is there, is there a reason why it won't come up, the website? I think if I go, if I go to mirroring, maybe? Yeah? Okay. Oh. <laughs> nice. Okay. So, thank you. Um, I'm going to make this large. This is the program that, uh, oh, sorry. I co-founded at, oh. Uh, how do I make this big? This one? Okay. I never make my things big. Okay. So, um, I'm going to have to just turn my head here. Okay. So, this is what I did. Okay. I actually designed this website. And um, it was based, okay. So, the, this was the first step. I, right as soon as I finished my master's, I did a presentation at College of the Rocky, or sorry, Fanshawe College. And, um, Crazy thing. All these staff are like, oh, you got to work here. We want you to teach here. And I'm thinking, whoa, you know, like I'm just finishing my, I'm a lowly master's student, right? Like I'm not even doing my PhD or, you know, and, um, you know, sort of my mentality. But I said, okay, well, l let's see how this goes. Well, they said, how about this? Design a couple courses for us and we'll see if we like them. Of course, they um, really liked them. And they said, um, um, we want you to develop a program. And I said, you know, I slept on it. And I said, no, I can't do it. Unless you allow me to meet with these um, 30 or 40 community members, all with a stake in education. Here's how to look. Here's my proposal. And they said, Got going on it right away. So this, this is. So I started teaching, developing this program, and doing my PhD all at the same time. It was uh, insane. Okay, um, it was literally like you know, wake up, work for eight hours, have a nap, work for another four or five, and uh, and go from there for about three years straight. So it was uh, it was really challenging. But what did we do? Well, we consulted with our community. We came up with 50 <laughs> recommendations for how the college could implement an indigenous studies framework based on indigenous knowledge. Okay. So that's what we did. And that's how we came up with this framework. And I'm going to see if I can zoom in. Okay. So we did, this was our values. This was our mission statement, our uh, enabling competence of indigenous values. Okay. Fostering balances of academic and traditional skills. Uh, nurturing the gifts within through holistic framework. Now, this program is continues. I don't teach there anymore or, or work with it. But, uh, and preserving ancestral wisdom. Okay. This is what we said we need to up, uphold. And from there, okay, we ended up consulting over 250 community members, 26 organizations, um, and I'm going to just show you the community partners. Um, nine different uh, First Nations reserves in southwestern Ontario. Um, it was like, to say it was a journey is crazy, okay? It was, it was um, you know, one of the greatest experiences I've ever had in my life. And these are all the people who said, yeah, we're going to support this. Okay. One of the things that was most extraordinary about this experience that came out of this was that 
they wanted us, a, a whole bunch of community members, whether they be elders, whether they be students, whether they be um, 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 instructors, the university instructors, college instructors, and just our, our uh, just community members in, in any employment. They said, we need an avenue, we need a place where indigenous knowledge can be shared that's not institutionalized. And so what we did was we ended up um, doing a grant. And where is it? Okay, this is based on the 13 moons. We also had um, 26 guest speakers throughout the year, all based on when the full moon was out. We had um, solstice and equinox ceremonies. So every time it came to solstice and equinox, we had a big gathering. We would invite, you know, I think at the last one that I participated in, there was over 300 participants. Um, we had um, world-famous musicians. Like, it was awesome. And... Um, I don't see it here. Let me just see. Probably. You can look this up. It's fanshawc.ca slash FNS. But um, what we did, um, I don't see it here. You can look it up, okay, is we, we wrote a grant, okay, a $200,000 grant to bring in elders biweekly every two weeks, not in the school, but at the f local friendship center. And so we got it. And we started to do it. And we, started to, we would have healthy food served. Okay? And the, the granting agency was so concerned that we wouldn't get 30 people. We said we, at least 30 people every time. Right? Now, we, didn't, we, we were like, yeah, like, let's get 30 people. Right? Well, we're serving a free meal at every one, uh, a healthy meal based on um, indigenous knowledge based on the 13 moons, okay? So in February, we had fresh syrup, right, on pancakes. Like, uh, of course, pancakes aren't traditional, but, um, you know, you have, to, you have to blend, okay? So um, we're like, we can get 30. We think we can get 30, right? And they're like, well, I don't know, and... We're like, we got to be able to get 30. Our first event uh, brought in about 150 people. The whole place was, the gym is just maybe a little bit bigger than this. And it was just jam-packed. Somehow we broke the bread and fed everyone. But um, um, what it was, was it was a, a holistic framework. Okay? Providing opportunities outside the classroom to have people share their gifts, to share their wisdom with um, the staff. And, it, it w you know, it was just, what an experience. So, I'm going to come back. There's more to that. But it's, it's the reminder that these things can be implemented. They can be practiced. But they're, 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 it's challenging. Right? Because there has to be champions willing to go the extra mile. Okay? There has to be champions willing to take a stand. Okay? We have to take a stand against um, the violence. We have to take a stand against um, what the media is telling us to be the subhumans that we have to... We, we have to own BMWs, right? In order to be something in this world. Right? We have to put our hands back in the soil. We have to put our moccasins back on. Of course, you know, for, for me, this, is, this, this has to be balanced, right? There has to be a balanced, a blended approach. I'm not going to completely, I tried once to completely separate myself out of this society because I was so frustrated with it, right? Well, here I am. So, um, um, I would say, you know, my path was not ready for that yet, right? I wasn't ready. Like, you know, my gifts have to be shared here at this time, okay? What this is, is it's, it's a 360 degree vision. Okay, that's the message of James Dumont. We have to see ahead and behind and at our center all at once. Now, there was a time when all the races were together. This is what we teach. Okay? We weren't divided by beliefs or by, you know. 
we, we, we were together. All the races of mankind. Okay? We worked together. We grew together. We played together. Right? We built our world together. Right? And I mean, I could refer to like megalithic construction and all that stuff, but you know, don't go here, go here. Okay. And there came a point where our roads diverged. And we say like the, the red man, okay, the red race, and that's his reference to the medicine wheel. We continued along this path, this, along this path of learning and coming back to our center, growing holistically, um, spiraling outwards, not too much, but coming back, never being too far. If you take a spiral, right, if I were to take the spiral and draw it as a line, I would be so far from my uh, um, center, right, I would no longer know what it looks like. I wouldn't be able to tell you what my gift is. But if I can come back to my center, if I can recognize who I am again as a human being, right? If I can recognize your gift for being great, for being here in this moment, thank you, <laughs> right? Um, I can begin to grow in a way that isn't based on our differences, in a way that isn't based on trying to solve some problem, but is it based on what makes my heart race. Okay. There is a value in seeing the world as a whole again. Okay. This is a return to a mythical time. It really is. Um, but what I want you to do right now is that uh, we're almost done. I'm almost done. You're going to get up. I want you to take your sticky notes that you, you have, and you know, I'm not going to say organize, and I want you to go and I want you to place it on this board. Anywhere you feel it's supposed to go. Okay? So, yeah, just should take you only a few seconds. Um, don't, don't be shy. Okay. Just come on up and place your sticky notes. Oh, thank you for Are you coming. With Michelle Pigeon's work? Uh, I, I know Michelle Pigeon, yeah, uh, but how do I know her? Yeah, so I am a doctoral student as well. Okay. But I, I'm a Michelle Pigeon. Here at BC. Okay, yes. Uh, the reason I say that is because yes. the whole time you've been talking, yeah. um, I've just written an article with her about student success. This Perfect. This is her framework <laughs> of indigenous knowledge. Of course. Holistic <laughs> indigenous framework. Yes. So it's something that I've been bringing into. Perfect. The connections are just yeah. all there. So. And, it, and it's here for you too, right? It's great. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry that you are an incredible young man. <laughs> Thank you. No, seriously. You are an Thanks. Young man. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. It's very, very impressive. Thanks. That's okay. Just get in there. Do it like hockey. Check them against the boards. <laughs> so, thank you for doing that. What I want you to see is that what you just did is that you all linked together each other's strengths into one uh, holistic framework. Thank you for doing that. What an amazing opportunity it has been to learn about your strengths. For me to learn about your gifts and to see them all come together uh, um, based on a framework which I truly believe in, right? Based on a framework that is built by um, the wisdom of my ancestors. And uh, just acknowledge that this was a painting by a friend of mine, Clayton King. And uh, Clayton, this was years ago that he shared this painting with me, but 
he, he knew some secret, right? He knew some secret long ago, and it's that, you know, we're, 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 we're blending, okay? We can't just say no. We can't just be full of hate and anger for what has transpired in this country, okay? But we must grow together. And if we can grow together um, based on each other's um, strengths and gifts, if, 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 uh, if you can find your gift, Right? Because you're great. <laughs> right? You're amazing. Thank you for existing. Um, humankind um, has not woven the web of life. We are but one thread within it. Whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. All things are bound together. All things connect. Okay? And how will you take flight, and this is a painting I did. Thank you very much. So thank you so much, Andrew, for the session today. It was really nice to have you today as a guest, and we're so happy that you could come in and we do have a gift for you. I think it's in the back, so we'll grab that. It's a, I think there's a bag in the back. <laughs> but I'll, I'll actually just open up to any questions from the, from the group. If there is any questions that you'd like to ask of Andrew or of his experience and process, or questions about what the um, diversity circles may look like here on campus and other events that are coming up. I'll promote another event that's coming up as well, but I'll open up to the floor as well. You're talking about setting up the program at Fanshawe College. And then I think you said you're at the College of the Rocky yeah. Mountains now. Yeah. What are you doing right now? So, uh, well, right now, um, coordinator of uh, Virgin Education, uh, coordinator advisor. So I not only work directly with students to help them, you know, determine their path, and not just Indigenous students, but all students. Um, and then how much time do you have? <laughs> so, um, one of my roles is to serve the indigenous nation whose land I am currently living on, and that is the Tunacha. And I give great thanks for that area that they chose. It's, I've, I think, one of the most extraordinary places I've ever seen. Um, it really reminds me, actually, of Guatemala, but it's even better, because <laughs> you don't have to worry um, so much. But um, So I, I generally put my role into three categories. So uh, one is working for, with the First Nations community. So at the College of Rockies, only about 5% of our students are Tunacha, okay? The, the other 95% come from various nations across on, um, Canada. Um, probably the highest percentage of Indigenous people we work with are the Métis. So um, we have signed the Indigenous Education Protocol Agreement, and uh, we signed that with the Métis Nation in BC, um, the Tunacha, and the Shushwap or the Kinbasket, who live in the northern part of the territory. Um, I work with four campuses to try to help them to identify the needs of Indigenous students. Um, with respect to the Indigenous Education Protocol, we've made in, uh, Indigenous Education a priority. Okay? So that means indigenizing, <laughs> right? Which is a really, f f uh, I find, funny term for, um, you know, remembering what we are as humans. and. Um, so part of our strategy, our success strategy, is not just about um, um, teaching our educators or, or, or helping our educators to enhance their curriculum. And I say enhance because I really believe that in incorporating princi principles of Indigenous knowledge will, in will and can enhance your curriculum, but also teaching about Indigenous people. You know, there's so little knowledge, but what's really great is that the K-12 system has recently um, said they're going to do it. <laughs> every course, every program is going to be indigenized. So um, we have a commitment now that K-12 is going to have some, you know, eh, that it's going to evolve, I guarantee it, over the next 10 years. We'll see how it goes. You know, what I'd really like to see is not just that we teach about Indigenous people, that they were here and that we occupy their land, right? But... Um, how do we actually live in some of the ways that they lived? Now, I'm not uh, here to say every way that Indigenous people lived was so great, right? Of course, we have s stories that aren't so great as well. But um, 
what I found just learning about my ancestral teachings as well as studying um, um, in, intensely with um, a Mayan teacher is there are some extraordinary things that um, just by implementing to my own life has changed my life, right? Just my ability to dream, for example. <sighs> you know, <laughs> just dreamt of a, 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 a dragon. I was telling, uh, did I tell you about that dream? You know, but uh, that was really intense. But um, there's so much more to life when we put the indigenous values back into it, I find, I found in my personal experience. So um, community, students, staff and faculty, okay, so we're trying to um, um, provide opportunities. We do, uh, we have regular visiting elder um, to do storytelling as well as uh, elder who makes a lunch to a once a, or twice a month, bi-monthly um, and bi-weekly, every two weeks. Okay, she's awesome, She'll, and everybody's always invited. So what we've really found was the international students that we have and now who are bringing in more um, have really uh, uh, accepted the invitation and they've come and out and said, yeah, we'd love to be, we have this beautiful, I, I work in a beautiful uh, center, the uh, Aboriginal gathering place. It's like a timber frame structure and my office is in there and it's like, wow, you know, how lucky can uh, one guy get? Um, but it, 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 it is a struggle. Right? It's not just, you know, you know. When when I get qu asked questions by faculty members who are teaching students, that, you know, just to be so not to be too harsh, but you know, they just okay. I don't want to. I'm not going to be harsh, but they just don't know, right? And so they ask these questions, uh, expecting simple answers, and so I try to give them the holistic answer, right? But that takes time. Because it has to do with so many things, right? It's not, I can't just say, oh yeah, just um, say uh, this, and that's going to be your solution. No. Um, so what I really try to do is I take my time with each person because I can only influence one at a time, I find, um, and, and say, okay, this is how you can change this piece, but it's going to affect all these other pieces. And, and I can't not but see that way anymore, right? Sure, I could say, yeah, just change this, Pfft, done, good. We've indigenized that, on to the next, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to say, hey, every faculty uh, um, group, right, like uh, history, geography, um, whether it be trades, doesn't matter. They need to have a budget for indigenous education. They need to have a commitment um, by the dean, department head, um, and uh, um, instructors to incorporate indigenous knowledge somehow, right? I'll help them um, to do that and I, I rely uh, on the community also. So that's what I'm doing now. I love it. Like I, I do, I love, I have to hand it to um, uh, Stan, uh, Dr. Chung, who I report to. He's an mm. extraordinary man and totally has helped me to sort of just slow down. You know, like I say, I come from an environment that was so fast paced to come to, you know, a small town and just to be like, oh, you got, I got to wait for you now. But that's okay. You know, sometimes people are waiting for me, of course, but just to slow down and let's do this right. And let's not have to do um, um, 30 years of one-offs, but let's start developing something that's permanent, long lasting, and that all, not only our indigenous students can benefit from, but our faculty can benefit from, um, all our students can benefit from, the community benefits from, our stakeholders benefit from, okay? This is a holistic framework, and uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen in a year or two, it, you know, we're looking at like a five-year, 10-year, 50-year plan, right? So. I just wanna say thank you for sharing your gifts with us. Um, I work in the counseling department here, and I was wondering if there was any possibility you would be willing to share any of the, the materials that you presented or the, the slides, or because I think a lot of them held a lot of meaning to me, and I'd like to s use them yeah. in my work. Yeah, you, I, th I think I already shared, so. The video will be housed on the SAR site. Cool. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other questions? Good. I think you guys probably are like, it's Friday. <laughs> and <laughs> it's sunny outside. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for giving me your time today and uh, uh, sharing 
your gifts with me, if I could have every day to learn about other people's gifts, wow, what a life that would be. Mm. Um, I will try to continue to awaken the um, um, gifts as, as I go along my journey, awaken my own. So thank you. So thank you again, uh, Andrew. That was really meaningful. And we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. This is really the, the sort of kickoff event for this project as it unfolds. And it was really special to have you share your gifts with us and help us to remember our gifts. I also want to thank the community. Um, yes, the, the, the FSA was the, the, the seed, the germ of this project. But as you can see from the faces in this room, uh, it's meant to be a partnership. It is a partnership, and it's just really exciting to see all the different groups from campus and the community represented here. So Derek is going to hand over the uh, the gift. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. And thanks <laughs> again, Andrew. Awesome. Okay.